Cancer, welcome to January and February 2018 Bliss Report. It's Raina here. Now, if you're wondering what a Bliss Report is, this is just me, my relabeling my former abundance readings that I did. I don't know if it's called bi-monthly, if it's every two months. To me, bi-monthly should be two times a month, right? But, oh well, whatever you want to call every two months, that's what I did last year. And I wanted to broaden it to, you know, figure into things, abundance that is not related directly to dollars and cents and career, okay? Because some people, you're retired or you are just not working for whatever reason. Maybe you don't have to worry about... Um, Supporting yourself at the moment, you're taking care of a parent, or you're with somebody else who is paying the bills, you know, for now, or maybe for the rest of your life. But anyway, um, I just wanted to, to make a more um, broad message for different areas. I'm not going to really go into love situations, because I do have separate love readings that I do. And the next ones coming up with those are going to be in the second week of January, God willing, okay? So having said that, this is like <laughs> the third time I've tried to upload these because, or record, I should say, because um, earlier in the day I, I had to stop a couple of times and I thought, well, I'll go out and come back and I'll be more able to do it. So I kept clearing my throat, so... Anyway, um, I'm going to just go ahead with this. I did want to tell you that, I'll, you know, the main part of this is my Morgan Greer deck, and I do have a couple of cards that are connected. This is a Akashic Tarot card. I'm going to put this up here because, actually, I got pretty far in the reading. I was almost done with it, and... Uh, I wanted you to be able to see it, but anyway, we'll get there. So let's talk about this. This is the overall theme for the first two months of the year. And the full card is a card of new adventures with no destination in sight. So whether it's literally jumping on a plane, going to a another country, let's say you're from America and you say, I want to travel in Europe, but I don't want to have an itinerary. I'm just going to start it in this country, and I'm going to just go on the train through all this, these European countries. And, and, but this is like, I, what I'm talking about here with this particular type of um, adventure is that there's something more to it than just sightseeing. And it certainly doesn't have to be that you're actually taking a vacation. This could be just taking a leap of faith in your life. And for cancer people with that classic cancer um, personality, if, that's, if you really um, resemble your sign, that is atypical for you. You're really the type to look before you leap and maybe not, and have a, an itinerary, have a game plan. So why would you be doing things this way? You've had a lot of energy. Uh, in January, there's a lot of Capricorn energy, especially in the first few weeks. And this is hitting your seventh house of committed partnerships. So now that Saturn has entered the picture in this uh, seventh house in Capricorn, you may be feeling the heat in a relationship. Now, this would be a relationship that is not solid. So don't worry if you have a happy relationship. That's not what I'm talking about. And you know deep down whether you have a happy relationship. I think. I think that anyone who is really shocked when they find out that their partner has been having a five-year-long affair probably hasn't been paying attention that there were other signs that the person was too wrapped up in themselves to, to really notice. If you're really connected to someone, it's hard for them to cheat on the partner, I think. 
maybe I'm wrong about that some of the time, but um, in my in my estimation, it would be um, hard to. Um, so that's going on for you, and maybe you. It's possible that you are clearing your head. Maybe you. Um, <clears throat> Maybe you had some kind of a a situation where your job has been, uh, you know, eliminated. Again, this would probably be something that you're aware of already. You you knew it was going to happen, or you retired. Something where you just have changed. Your life has changed one way or the other, and you are just kind of almost commemorating it with doing things totally differently. You are having a solar eclipse, but this is uh, during the time of your solar return in July. So this isn't something that's happening in the near future. Uh, the near future for you is actually the recent past when you had a full moon on the first of the month or the second, wherever you live. And so this is something that has already been um, in play for you, and th that may clear the decks for you to take this leap of faith, because because full moons can bring endings. In the past position, we have the Page of Cups. So this is a very trusting, maybe overly trusting energy. Again, this could relate to a significant other that you got bamboozled by, and maybe this is kind of you going off on your own. Um, I, as I said, I'm not going to go too much into relationship, but it's kind of like, what is the catalyst for you to become like the fool? This is also a card of the artist, of um, somebody who's very receptive, you know, and psychic, but also artistic. So that may be what is spurring you to make a change in your life. Also, with the, the Page of Cups, we could be talking about an actual child, and maybe you want to protect your child from a certain environment. Because as the higher message, I have here the Seven of Wands, which is a card of being on the defensive. And um, <clears throat> now you see why I'm, I've had to start over again. Ugh. Um, this is actually... As a spiritual message, I would say that this is something that maybe you have gotten into a pattern with some area of your life, whether it be a, an important relationship or the workplace where you feel like you have to defend yourself from accusations of not being good enough and that sort of thing, where you feel like always on the defensive. Now, cancer people can normally feel like this. You're very sensitive. I'm sure you've heard that a gazillion times, but it's true. I mean, I know this to be true about cancer individuals. And it's important, you know, to see where you are being triggered and to see how you, how you're projecting insecurity onto certain situations that you take offense to. But on the other hand, there may be some really clear cut times when other people are um, trying to make you out to be wrong or what have you. And you do need to be away from those people because they're kind of toxic. So it all depends on the individual situation. But in general, as the spiritual message, it's kind of like saying, what does what do certain people, how, what kind of emotion do they generate in you? Do they generate a feeling of, acceptance or a sense of you feeling defensive because of whatever it is that they say. And remember, too, that sometimes that kind of um, tactic is used to keep people on their toes. You've heard that expression, the best defense is a good offense. Sometimes people go on the offensive to keep the other person constantly trying to defend themselves unnecessarily and just um, having that certain kind of, um, you know, trying to provoke them into this 
constant state of insecurity where they have to justify their actions. And, um, you know, so you're trying to get away from that. What crosses you is the Sun card. Now, I should say with that Seven of of uh, Wands, since it's a fire energy, that could be a, um, a Leo person. This is also Leo. That is not good for you. That maybe you have allowed in your life for too long. Uh, or they may have very strong Leo tendencies. But also, this card, even in the challenge position, is actually very positive because the Sun card is such a positive card. So it's talking about delayed success and understanding that maybe timing is off for certain things that you are trying to accomplish. And that's another reason why, why the Fool card is such a welcome card to receive for this beginning of the year because it may be, Cancer, that some of you are really undergoing major transitions with that opposition to Pluto, to Saturn, and to some of these, even these personal plants like Venus. I think, you know, I don't know when Venus goes out of Capricorn, but it's going to be there for, I think it's like half of the month, at least until the 17th or so. So um, there may be, and even the new moon is in, in um, Capricorn. So it's like a seesaw effect with an opposition where it's like you're, you know, you you can't, you're veering between these two situations, emotions, what have you, where you're like torn, you know. Um, I think of the two of, two of swords in a sense, where it's like making a decision about something or just um, having uh, feelings that, that are about both situations. So, in other words, with the first and seventh house, it's like, who, you know, do I have to give up my own self to be loved by you? And, and um, feeling torn about that. And the, the, the sun card deals with success, love, children, and healing, happiness just joy, positive things, creativity. So in the challenge position, it's like, what are what is um, blocking all of these things for you? Is it a relationship that you can't seem to let go of completely? Is it this need for, um, what is that word for guarantees in life? because you're afraid of the unknown. The Fool card is trusting in the unknown. And so I hope that if this resonates for some of you, that you're at this crossroads, that you will embrace what that card represents. What is coming in is represented by the tower. And of course, you don't have to know exactly what the tower represents to get a feel for what it might symbolize, which is upheaval. Um, we have a lunar eclipse, total lunar eclipse on January 31st. So that could certainly get the ball rolling. In February, we have a solar eclipse in Aquarius. So the lunar eclipse is a very powerful full moon. So something could be taken away. This is second house for you of earned income. So that could be going back to some of those early cards. You know, we don't have to um, be obsessive about the chronology here. I mean, it could be something that the, the fool card could be talking about you're prompted to go off on your own because you have no choice. You know, you don't have any guarantees. Um, my feeling, though, is that the tower card is only scary to people who believe that change, even unexpected change, is automatically bad. If you, if you really believe, um, when I did this reading the first time, I quoted the song by John Lennon called Across the Universe, where he says, nothing's going to change my world. And obviously, we, we have change in life, uh, unless you're in a hermetically sealed tomb. You have change. Change is inevitable in life. However, um, 
catastrophic change usually, in my uh, estimation comes about when the person refuses to change on their own. So when people are open to change, the more that you are open to it, the more that I feel there's no kind of catastrophe that you ever have to be afraid of. Because the tr truth be told, none of us have guarantees beyond this moment. If you're watching this video, this is the only moment that is happening for you. The future, I don't care how much insurance you have. I don't care about anything. You have no idea what is happening tomorrow. I don't care if you consulted a psychic and they told you this and that's going to happen. You don't know that that's going to come true. And by the way, this is a general reading. So um, even like if, if cards like the, the tower really freak you out, don't allow that to... Um, create, you know, don't create your reality um, by by believing the worst. Um, you know, people do that as well. They expect the worst and then it shows up for them. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, um, the, the tower is a change agent. And it could be that that you are changing careers changing workplaces. If you've done the best that you can, allow the, the eclipse energy to do its thing. Who knows? It could be a really good thing. It could shake you up in a good way. And you'll, you know, even if something really amazing happens to you, you have to adjust to that too, Cancer, because that's the, the thing about life is that even when good things happen, it can be very unsettling if you don't believe you deserve it. Okay, and the outcome is the Knight of Pentacles. This is a card associated with Taurus. I associate with Capricorn, but either way, it's earth energy, it's practical, it is somebody who is earning money, doing, you know, on a consistent basis. They are like uh, nose to the grindstone. You may be uh, really trying to accomplish something financially for yourself and you're really in that worker bee mode if this is another person they are adding to your life perhaps this is your partner um, that even if you have um, uh, found that a source of your income is no longer there that they are picking up the slack and so everything, there's continuity there. But this could definitely be um, a facet of you where you are forced to change. But again, the sun card points to success. It may not be in the timeline of when you um, expect it to be, but it's waiting for you. So maybe there's something, maybe this clears the air and allows things to flow. Remember that nature abhors a vacuum. So something leaves and something else comes in its wake and it can be much better. And you would have never um, even known about it because you were clinging so hard to the known quantity. Now let's look at the Akashic Tarot. I got the King of Keys, and this is a card of, um, I'm going to put this down here as I describe what it stands for. The King of Keys rides a splendid horse toward a great castle in the distance. He is happy and at ease as he travels home. This is an entrepreneurial man with civil or commercial authority. My feeling that this is kind of similar to the King of Pentacles, or even in some ways the Knight of Pentacles. He is confident, astute, and perhaps overly focused on his work or career. Though he can be very thoughtful and helpful to you in business or financial matters, he is often more goal-oriented than people-oriented. 
Keep this in mind if this man turns out to be a love interest for you or another. Whether the King of Keys represents you or another, be on the lookout for a major promotion, a heightening of income, or furthering of career achievements. Careers in finance, real estate, and business are typical for the King of Keys, but management in any industry can be forthcoming. This may also be a good time for self-employment and business expansion for you or a man in your life. Interesting that they're mentioning a man in your life because I did say that the the Knight of Pentacles, um, this could be somebody who's there to pick up the slack if, if this is your partner. Now, as I stated earlier, um, some of you may be kind of... Um, getting away from a primary relationship. And so this may be a facet of yourself that is becoming much more um, connected. Maybe you do start your own business in the first couple of months. Um, just to remind you, we do have all the planets direct now. So uh, January and February are great go for it months in 2018. There were a lot of retrogrades, including a very long Mars retrograde. So uh, starting in, I think, June. So, But Jupiter goes retrograde in, um, in March. There's another Mercury retrograde in March. So anyhow, and uh, Venus even goes retrograde at some point. Okay, so then the other one, this is from my Keepers of the Light. This is, I can't, I can't pronounce this, the Shekinah Sacred Self. Unleash your spirit, express your gifts, dance the sacred rhythm of life. And I think with the Page of Cups, um, that's, you know, a creative energy. So that's about your gifts, too. And that's what, cre that's what creativity is, is sharing your uh, creative self-expression, your, your own soul's expression. The Shekinah is the twin flame of the Holy Spirit. It is the female aspect of the God particle or creation energy. She is more of an essence than the being, but has the ability to show herself in ways that we will understand. She is acknowledged in the sacred teachings of Judaism and also called the Sophia of Christ in the Gnostic Gospels. She is a powerful female voice of spirit who is here to bring about equality and to help the world move on from the male-only image of God. She reminds us that God is all-loving and all-accepting, whether she appears in a reading Whenever she appears in a reading, she points out the change makers, the love creators, and the gift sharers of the world who are here to unite all hearts around the world. Don't feel the need to hold back or dampen your spirit. This is a time to celebrate. There's a feeling of dance and joy around you at this time as you fully recognize your splendor. You are a sacred being who defies gravity every day just by being alive and brings a sense of balance and equality to the world. Okay, well, um, it's interesting that this is a feminine energy because cancer is a female sign, so I guess that that works well too. But um, that's true for all of us, you know, we, that's what creativity is all about. And sometimes creativity comes in the form of um, dance or, you know, anything that you do that showcases your talents. It might be physical. It might be um, musical. Or, or maybe you are a great knitter, you know. Um, and people, I think also, people appreciate receiving gifts from people that are creating for them. And there's that the energy that is woven pardon the pun, into every piece of creation that we can do. So anyway, Cancer, I wish you all the best and um, enjoy the change. Enjoy what it brings to your life. It's here. Um, it's a positive thing. Um, I wanted to say too, which is very interesting because there, the solar eclipse is in Aquarius, and this is your eighth house, and this connects to 
other people's money. So that's a, a very powerful new beginning with other people's money. So again, um, if you are coupled and that person gets like a major raise, then anything that, you know, if you find that you have some kind of temporary loss of income, that other person can come and save the day. And um, likewise, you may be your own best um, earner if this represents you and the solar eclipse in the eighth, eighth house can be receiving an inheritance that you didn't expect. And it's just like, or maybe you find out that some stock that you invested, uh, invested in long ago has just kind of taken off like crazy. And all of a sudden you have this source of um, money that you didn't have to directly earn because this the second house is money that you earn. But there's other ways that we get money, whether it's from a gift or inheritance or things like that. Or a partner. Okay, Cancer, if you'd like a private reading, please click on the link below. Um, my website is com. God bless you. Bye.